the cleric one of my favorite classes and one of the most versatile classes in my opinion this is my pure war cleric build it's going to be a frontline tank healer so let's get it going we're going to start with the cleric and for your cantrips we're going to take guidance we're going to take resistance and we're going to take produce flame war domain obviously so this gives us war priest we make an unarmed or weapon attack you can spend a war priest charge to make an additional attack as a bonus action we also get the heavy arm proficiency and the martial proficiency as well as a bunch of spells if you're a deity pick any god you fancy and when it comes to your ability points we're going to do something like this 16 strength as this is what our weapon attacks will be based on 15 con and this will make more sense as the build goes on 16 wisdom as this is our spell casting ability 8 in charisma 8 in intelligence and 10 in dexterity you can do these last three in any order if you'd rather have more intelligence or more charisma you can for your proficiencies take whatever fits your character and we move on to level two of our cleric channel divinity charges and these do allow you to turn undead and they replenish on a short or long rest so you can use them more often we also get guided strike this is another channel divinity ability you get a plus 10 bonus to your attack rolls for your spells we're going to take guiding bolt inflict wounds healing word command and cure wounds now guiding bolt is really good if it hits because the next attack against that target will have advantage so if you can set this up and then your rogue can do a sneak attack or something really powerful build inflict wounds is an amazing melee necromancy spell and because we are going to be a melee based character there's no reason you should be able to pop this off quite a lot okay cleric level three we get a bunch of new spells to pick from so our first spell for this is going to be hold person basically if you succeed this uh spell the character that it is against is held and any hits against that character by anyone is a critical hit and this lasts for 10 turns or until your character's concentration is broken and don't forget concentration is based on constitution not on your spell casting modifier which brings us to cleric level four this gives us access to a feat after we pick our cantrip of light and for your feat we are going to come down here and we're going to take resilient and we're going to take resilient constitution to help us gain proficiency in those constitution saving throws to make sure our spells last this also bumps us up to 16 instead of 15 and now we get a plus three for your spell we're going to take prayer of healing heal all the allies you can see and it's 5 to 19 really good stuff okay cleric level 5 we now have level 3 spell slots we also have destroy undead when you successfully turn an undead creature it also takes 4 to 24 radiant damage so if you turn undead using your channel divinity you now succeed in doing a mass load of damage to them and for your, he your spell here we're going to take another healing ability and that is mass healing word now I'm basing this build off your cleric being your main healer still. If you have a bard in your party or a druid and you want them to be your main healer, you can switch some of these abilities out for other spells. Just bear that in mind. Now level 6 we have access to another channel divinity and this time we have channel divinity war god's blessing where you can grant an ally a plus 10 bonus to their attack roll. And for a spell we're going to take one of my favourites in the game, glyph of warding. Now again I've said it before and I'll say it again. With the glyph once you place it it will trigger at the end of your turn if there are enemies within it so you don't need to wait for someone to run into it for it to trigger so if you can place it in a big cluster where there's a bunch of enemies it will trigger and deal damage to two three four five however many enemies are in the center cleric level seven again level four spell slots now and for this one we are going to take guardian of faith call for for divine guardian that attacks nearby enemies really good because if you can place this next to you you can really make a strong choke point now this will last for 10 turns and every time it deals damage it will lose an equal amount of health points so if it has 60 health and it deals 20 damage to an enemy it will drop down to 40 and so on really good way of dealing damage to enemies that run towards you or enemies stuck in the circle but it will lose health really quick and even quicker if people start attacking it because it's triggered at aggro Okay, Cleric level 8, we have access to another feat. We also have access to Divine Strike. Once per turn, deal an additional 1 to 8 weapon damage. 
So this just goes on top of your normal weapon strike. Really powerful stuff. We are going to couple this with the amazing ability of Savage Attacker. When making melee weapon attacks, you roll your damage dice twice and use the highest result. Now for this build, you can do Sword and Board or a two-handed weapon. It is entirely up to you. This build will work either way. If you just don't go with the shield, you will have slightly less AC, but you probably have a bigger damage output thanks to the mass damage two-handed weapons can deal. And for a spell here, we are going to take Revivify. Again, not really necessarily if you have other healers or lots of scrolls, but I like Revivify just enough to spend the gold buying more scrolls, especially if you get downed a lot. Okay, Cleric level 9, we now have access to level 5 spells. And our first one is going to be what I think is one of the best spells in the game. Contagion. Poison a target and possibly afflict them with a disease of your choice. This now brings us to Cleric level 10. At this point, we can get Divine Intervention. Now, this only is once per playthrough, so bear that in mind. Once you use it, it is gone for good, so make sure you pick and choose the right moments. We also have access to another cantrip, so we'll take Sacred Flame. And then we have access to one more spell, and we shall take Mass Cure Wounds. Now, Cleric level 11, we now have access to 6 level spell slots, and the first one we are taking is Planar Ally. We get to basically call someone else from the Outworld to help us in fighting. Really, really nice. Pair this with the uh, Garden of Faith, and your War Cleric basically has two summons that can mass deal damage. And finally, Cleric level 12. Now we do have access to another feat, and if you wanted to, you could take something like Sentinel, you could take Shield Master if you're keeping a shield on you, you could take Tough, really the choice is yours. What I would personally do would be to take the Ability Score Improvement and bump your con up to 18. And for a final spell, I really like Harm. 14 to 84 damage, reduce the target's maximum hit points, but never below 1. And it lasts until long rest. So, even if they save, they take half the damage rolled, and then hit point isn't reduced. But if you throw this on an enemy that heals a lot, you can really stunt them from doing their abilities. Okay, so that was the build itself from level 1 to 12. Now, we are going to look at some equipment, and I really like the flawed Helldusk armor. Theoretically, you should use the normal Helldusk armor. This is found at the end of Act 3, or whenever you go into the House of Hope. So, it's your choice. I'm giving you the option for like the start of Act 3, shall we say. So the flawed Helldusk armor. The helmet itself gives you a plus 2 to saving throws against spells and constitution saving throw plus 1. I mean, the chance to keep our concentration up on spells is even higher. We also have access to the Helldusk armor. When you hit by a foe within 2 meters, it takes 1 to 4 fire damage. We take 1 less piercing damage. So basically, we now deal damage for t getting hit. And since we're going to be at the front line, this is just free damage. With the gloves, now the gloves, your weapon attacks deal an additional 1 to 4 fire damage, and if we wanted to, unarmed attacks deal 1 to 4 necrotic, but we won't. There's no point. When it comes to rings, the ring of regeneration. At the beginning of your turn, the ring activates and heals you for 1 to 4 hit points. The strange conduit ring, or concentrate on a spell, the wearer's weapon attacks do an additional 1 to 4 psychic damage. I really like the strange tendril amulet. It does allow you to cast Edward's Black Tentacles. Now bear in mind, this is a concentration spell, but I think it's one of the best spells in the game. I absolutely love it. When it comes to the cloak, we got the Vivacious Cloak. Now, when you gain... Now, when you cast a spell while in melee, aka Inflict Wounds, it will activate and give you 8 temporary hit points. We're going to pair all this with the Blood of Lathander. So... 8 to 16 damage, it is a 1d6 plus 6 for bludgeoning, a 1d4 fire damage thanks to our equipment, and once we concentrate on the spell, another 1d4 psychic damage. It also allows us, if we were reduced to 0 hit points, regain 2 to 12 hit points, and then allies will regain 1 to 6. So basically, if we get downed as the frontline tank, we will bounce back with extra health. And it also gives us access to Sunbeam which is really good. Now that is the build, as I said, we are going to go find some combat and we'll test this build out. As you can see with my composition, we don't have a pure melee character. We've got Will, Jahira and my rogue. 
So the Cleric is going to be our frontline tank slash damage dealer, and we'll see how this pairs out. Okay, as you can see, we in, are in the combat. Now, unfortunately, your initiative with this isn't too high. We do have 20 AC, though, so it is a trade-off. We will get to our Cleric's turn, and we'll start doing this build in all its glory. Okay, so as you can see, we went to hit an enemy with Eldritch Blast. Unfortunately, Will was going to miss. So we can actually spend one of our channel divinities as a reaction to allow War God's Blessing. And if you remember, plus 10 to attack rolls. And there you go, we hit with some damage. Okay, here's now our lovely Cleric's turn. And we have a bunch of options we can do. We can start healing people if we wanted to. We can start our summons. But we're going to start a very, very basic. And we're going to get... Our planar ally. Now this is a level 6 spell slot and we only have one. But we're going to get that and we can basically summon anything we want. So let's take a Deva. And there you go. 136 damage. Very, very strong character. And the Deva has a bunch of attacks including a Wrathful Smite. So we can come in here and miss sadly. That's awesome. What this does mean though is that we have our reaction that we can deal some damage with. So we can do a Shield of Faith, Spirit Guardians, and Mass Healing Word. We will get our Spiritual Weapon and we'll get our Great Axe out. And now we have two summons slash allies on the battlefield ready to start dealing some damage. And what we'll do is we'll just start closing the distance. Okay, back to our Deva. So let's give this another try and see if it works. There you go, we did 26 damage, and we caused Frightened. And if we check out what Frightened is, that basically means that they have disadvantage ability checks and attack rolls and can't move. The Deva is very powerful, and not only that, it can fly. So if you want to get around the battlefield easier, the Deva has that ability. Okay, it is now our Cleric's turn, and we're just going to start dealing some damage. So, our normal attack. There you go, big hit. And we can do Divine Strike. So, do an additional 1 to 8 bludgeoning damage. This is obviously a channel divinity. So if we trigger that, just more damage on top. We have another attack, just like that. And that is both of our rounds gone, because we get two attacks per round. Okay, back to our Deva, and once again, we're going to try another Wrathful Smite. And there you go, another mass load of damage from our summon. Now to really boost our damage thanks to the strange conduit ring what we need to do is start casting our spells and we're going to do a high level spirit guardians so if we cast it at level 5 it is 5 to 40 damage and there you go as you can see we absolutely melted them now our staff or our mace sorry will do an additional 1 to 4 weapon damage so if we come in here Within one round, we have taken out two people, and because it's a main action, we still have our bonus action. We can do our healing abilities, just like that. And there you go. As you can see, because we did it next to our characters, and they became healed, we gained the eight additional temporary hit points thanks to our cloak. And now we are back in our front line where we should be. Okay, and this is what makes the War Cleric so powerful, especially with the equipment build we have. Once we've taken everyone in the middle, like here, we can then come forward and start moving around. So we close down other allies. Thanks to Spirit Guardians, we just deal free damage for being next to them. We can then come in with our other spells, like an Inflict Wounds, which can deal mass damage. So we're casting this at level 5. This is as high as we can do it. Or well, sorry, level 4. Because that's as, as high as we can do it with the spell slots we have. We come in here. And there you go. We did... An insane amount of damage that we wiped out their entire pool of health. If we come to our combat log, we can see we did 64 damage. It was a critical, so it was doubled. But overall, even with our normal roll, we did 64. Phenomenal stuff. And what's really good is our Deva has stayed, as you can see here. We can then come back in with our normal shore rest. And as you'll see... All our channel divinities have restored. Now the Deva is amazing. It will follow you around. It has your smites. So it really pairs into that cleric and paladin like holy ability. But what's really good about this. Is if we were to go and long rest. 
So we just gone along rested. And as I was saying, what's really good about the planar ally is you don't need to be in combat to cast it. So as soon as you leave combat, cast it up and get that spare ally on the battlefield. 136 hit points. As you see, he's the tankiest person on my team. He has the smites. He can fly. Very, very useful person to have. It's worth the level 6 spell slot, and it's worth doing it as soon as you leave camp or whatever, so that they're just roaming around with you. So if you find any little bosses or any little enemy groups, you can probably save some of your spell slots you would do to mass deal damage, and just rely on your ability to hit hard, your channel divinities, and your Deva. Now that has been my War Cleric Tanking DPS healer. If you have enjoyed, please drop this a like, it helps me amazingly. Let me know in the comments what you would change about this, what you would do differently. If you're new and not subscribed, you'd like to, that'd also be amazing. And hopefully, I'll see you all in the next one. Bye, guys.